the first thing we would ask for is let's have let's have cameras in the courtroom so all Americans can see mm. what's happening in our criminal justice system. And I would right. hope the Department of Justice would join in that effort so that we, we take the curtain away and all Americans get to see what's happening. That's right. We heard it from the ex-president's own lawyer demanding a one-time exception to federal law. So the cameras will allow the public to witness his 2020 election-related trial, one of the most significant trials in our lifetimes. House Democrats, too, are on board. Yesterday, 40 of them, including several members of the January 6th Select Committee, called for the Judicial Conference, led by Chief Justice John Roberts, to allow both of Trump's federal trials to be televised. Quote, given the extraordinary national importance to our democratic institutions and the need for transparency. And this week, Neil Katyal argues it would be really dangerous for Roberts to not make an exception for the sake of truth over disinformation. Katyal writes, quote, this criminal trial is being conducted in the name of the people of the United States. It is our tax dollars at work. We have a right to see it. And we have the right to ensure that rumor mongers and conspiracy theorists don't control the narrative. We're back with Neil, Glenn, and Katie. Neil, you write about how this could happen, either if Congress passes a law or with the exception made by Chief Justice Roberts. It seems like a no-brainer to you, or maybe he doesn't want to reignite the argument for cameras before Supreme Court proceedings. Well, I do think it is ultimately a no-brainer. This rule originated in 1946, and we now live in a digital age where people think visually and are accustomed to seeing things with their own eyes. And look, I, I know the Chief Justice has, and many of the justices have a concern about cameras in the Supreme Court, but that's a very different thing than what we're talking about here for two reasons. One is in the Supreme Court, there are no witnesses or credibility determinations. You're not looking at a defendant's demeanor. The defendant isn't there, and there are no witnesses. It's a purely legal argument. Um, whereas in a criminal trial, that's kind of the essence of what a criminal trial is all about. Indeed, in the George Floyd case, Minnesota had a rule that banned TV in for criminal trials. It had never been done. And the judge authorized an exception for that case. And I thought it worked well because it allowed all Americans, you know, and there was a whole, whole lot of hoopla around that case. They could see it for themselves, see what actually happened. Um, the other thing is that this case, United States versus Trump, is really different than anything else. I mean, this is one of the defining cases of American history, not just in our lifetimes. It's obviously the most important case in our lifetimes, but in American history. And so I do think, you know, it's possible to think of this case operating a little differently than other cases. And, you know, the concern on the other side, I think the best argument is, well, if you look at, for example, the O.J. Simpson trial, um, there was a lot of, you know, lack of decorum around the courtroom proceedings and television and televising those proceedings may have contributed to that. And I think there's two fundamental differences. One is, again, this is not the, you know, some athlete charged with, uh, you know, crime of violence. This is the president of the United States as the president of the United States being charged for his behavior while president, being charged with basically trying to launch a coup to keep himself in power. It goes to the essence of what our democracy is. The second is don't underestimate Donald Trump's ability to try and, you know, say stuff outside of court and his, you know, his party and his lawyers and so many others, all of which can undermine the decorum anyway. The best check on that this is something one of our greatest justices, Louis Brandeis, said, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Let the American people see this trial for themselves day in and day out and make their own determinations. We shouldn't be you know, relegated to secondhand descriptions and some courtroom sketches of what's going on in that courtroom. Right. Glenn, do you think it makes a difference for people to watch it, to hear it, to see it versus what we know will happen, which is to be exposed to the spin machine that happens outside of the courtroom. Absolutely, Alicia. I agree with everything in Neil's excellent op-ed. And let me make two points. First of all, if cameras are not permitted in the courtroom, Donald Trump and his criminal defense attorneys and Donald Trump's lackeys and sycophants at the end of every trial day will spin what happened in trial. They will probably come out and say what a great day it was for Donald Trump. You know, the evidence is falling apart that the prosecution is introducing. 
proving it's nothing but a witch hunt or election interference. Um, whereas Jack Smith and his team of prosecutors will come out of the courtroom every day and say exactly nothing. That's not a fair fight. We need a fair fight in the court of law, which Donald Trump is going to get and the American people are going to get. But, you know, this is also going to be fought in the court of public opinion. And what the voters hear about what happened during the trial will impact their decision about who to vote for in the 2024 presidential election. And the second point, real quick, is there's something called the Crime Victims' Rights Act. It's 18 United States Code 3771. And it says crime victims may not be excluded from court proceedings in which they were a victim. Look at charge four in the indictment. It is a conspiracy to deprive us all of the full value of our vote, of our voting rights, the American people, in a very real sense, are crime victims. And therefore, the Crime Victims Bill of Rights, the, uh, the, the Crime Victims Rights Act, provides that they shall not be excluded from the courtroom. But if this proceeding is not televised, all of the victims will be excluded from the courtroom. And I think that's actually another legal statutory right that is at risk if we, the people, don't get to see these proceedings. Katie, when you have Trump's lawyers making the argument for cameras in court, do you take that seriously or do you think they're bluffing? I take it seriously because we know that Trump is pushing his lawyers to take positions. I mean, I'd like to have more respect for fellow members of the bar, and I'll reserve judgment on some of Trump's legal team. But you and I both know that Trump's positions are just echoed through his lawyers out for public consumption. And so Trump wants the circus. And that's the fear, right? If you're the federal judge in this instance, do you provide that opportunity? I will say this, Neil Glenn and I have practiced in federal court for several years. Federal court is not state court. I have a lot of respect for state court judges. It's where I cut my teeth. But federal court has a level of decorum that has to be respected. And the judges are not going to take any bleep from any criminal defendant, especially somebody like Donald Trump. And I think we've already seen that. We've seen an admonishment from the magistrate judge saying, you better you know, mind your P's and Q's, Mr. Trump, in terms of what you do, in terms of influencing witnesses, et cetera. So I think they believe it, Alicia. I think that's what their client wants. And I think we all should have this opportunity to witness history in the making, especially if you consider the fact that this was Donald Trump's attempts to steal the outcome of the 2020 presidential election from all of us, to invalidate what were legal votes that were rendered by all of us. And I think it's important for America to be able to be a part of what is history in the making.